Okay, um, close to finished. Um, way back at the beginning of the semester, we talked about chemical messengers um, being released and binding to receptors on target cells. And then the target cell has a target cell response. Um, I want to add a little bit more detail about that since we've been talking about receptors with neurotransmitters. This stuff is all the way back to chapter five, but it's a little dry, so I don't usually like to talk about it super early in the semester. So basically what I wanna talk about is how a chemical messenger binding to a receptor can cause a target cell response. The target cell response is a series of events inside the target cell that will make it behave differently than it did before the chemical messenger was bound. We call that series of events a signal transduction pathway. So a signal is the chemical messenger. Transduction is like playing telephone, right? So if this person says, uh, I want a purple wombat, how many steps is it before this person says, you want a pop poodle at bat? Um, hopefully it doesn't get garbled like that, but it's not like it never happens. So how many steps in between there? All of the steps combined uh, make something happen. And that process is called the signal transduction pathway, the response to a neurotransmitter or any chemical messenger. Really depends on the receptors that's present on the cell, even more than the chemical messenger. So um, first thing that we have to consider is, is the chemical messenger lipid soluble or water soluble? If it's lipid soluble, remember we've learned this multiple times, then its receptor is likely intracellular. It's either in the cytoplasm or maybe it's all the way in the nucleus. Um, so lipid soluble chemical messengers activate a pathway that is really direct. You don't have to play very much telephone if you can go straight into the nucleus. So this um, pathway is called gene activation. And so this looks super complicated, but basically what it is, is the chemical messenger binds to the receptor, which is inside the cell. The new shape, which is a hormone receptor complex or a ligand receptor complex or whatever, goes all the way in and binds to a specific gene on the DNA. And what it does is it initiates protein synthesis, which is transcription, translation. Now I have a new protein. That new protein could be structural. If it was, for instance, um, testosterone causing synthesis of myosin inside a skeletal muscle fiber could be functional and then you would actually um, do secretion. So what kinds of things use this? Um, steroids and thyroid hormones are lipid soluble and they very likely use gene activation as their signal transduction pathway. Okay, quick animation of um, gene activation. Aldosterone is a lipid-soluble hormone that can easily diffuse through the plasma membrane. Inside the cell, aldosterone binds with an aldosterone receptor molecule in the cytoplasm. The aldosterone receptor complex moves into the nucleus and binds to DNA. The binding of the aldosterone receptor complex to DNA stimulates the synthesis of messenger RNA, which codes for specific proteins. The messenger RNA moves from the nucleus into the cytoplasm and binds to ribosomes where it directs the synthesis of specific proteins. These proteins produce the response of the cell to aldosterone.